So welcome again to Real Estate Strategies by Ken McElroy. So this question came in from Leslie, one of our premium members, and it was, what are the items you look for when screening a tenant? Now this is really, really important, and a lot of people just completely forget this step. In other words, a tenant comes in and they just have a bunch of cash. Uh, there's a reason. And so a lot of times people with bad credit or even criminal backgrounds you know, they're the nicest people. They obviously want to move in. And so they're going to come in with a bunch of cash or even pay you a lot of money right up front. It's really important that you understand who you're renting to because not only for the rent payment, but you want to know who's living there because you have other neighbors. You have people that live in the property more than likely next to you, above you, below you, uh, you know, and so you want to make sure just from a safety standpoint that all these things are checked. So one of the things that we do is we obviously check the criminal background checks. We, we, we run a credit background check and we even do a sex offender check. So the second question from Brad, who is one of our premium members at KenMacroy.com is what is the first step in syndicating money and finding investors? So here's the thing about raising money, guys. There's a lot of it out there. There's a lot of people with a lot of money out there. And actually getting the money is not as hard as you think it is. The hardest part is actually finding a property that makes sense as an investment itself. So once you find that property, then believe it or not, investors show up. And it's easy to raise money on properties that make sense. So for example, if I'm buying a vacant building and I have a tenant for that building and I put the tenant in that building, that building is worth more than when it was vacant. It just is gonna be with a tenant in it. And so that's an easy scenario for an investor to figure out. You buy it for a million, you put a tenant in it, now it's worth a million five. That's easy for an investor to figure out. So raising capital is not that hard if you can see a deal, if you can prove that the deal is gonna do really, really well over the long term. The first step in syndicating money is to understand the rules around syndication and securities because when you're raising capital is an actual security. And so we fall under what's called Regulation D and we only accept accredited investors. So for us, we have a questionnaire that each investor fills out and a questionnaire that they certify that they're accredited. And we have a conversation with them to find out their level of investment because that's a very important piece. And for our company, we have minimums per project. And so we wanna have a conversation with all those people. The last thing you want is to take money from people that can't afford the investment. It's very important that you follow those steps. The third question from Tina, one of our premium members, is how does the cash flow game help kids learn about money? So this is a great question. I bought the cash flow game for my kids when they were little. And the thing about kids when you have them young, six, eight, 10 years old, is they love to play board games. They do, especially with their adults, especially on something they learn. And so I'm just gonna talk about Monopoly for a moment, because a lot of people understand Monopoly. Monopoly is so simple. You land on somebody's spot, you pay them rent, just like in the real world. If you own the property, they pay you rent. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. That's the strategy. Buy four greenhouses, 1031 into a red uh, hotel. And then all of a sudden, you've got that hotel with lots of people generating lots of cash flow. So that is the way it works. So cash flow takes it another step. So the cash flow game actually uh, makes you fill out an income statement. So as you're doing the game, your actual financial statement and your income statement and your balance sheet actually change as you're moving through the board. And I'll tell you exactly what happened. So my son enrolled at University of Arizona and one of the classes that he took was finance. And he said to me, he's like, I totally understood finance because of the cash flow game. We had already learned everything about assets and liabilities and income and expenses already through the game. So he felt like he had a massive advantage while he was sitting in class while a lot of, uh, while a lot of the other kids were very lost. So kids don't understand that they're learning things like income statements and balance sheets at a young age. They're just playing a game. 
And fast forward, pretty soon they start to understand these kind of concepts. They understand that if they invest $10,000 into an ice cream store and it produces $1,000 a month, that a $10,000 investment produces $12,000 a year. They understand that because they're actually getting the cash. So that's what the cash flow game does. I think it's a great learning tool. And if you have young kids, I highly recommend that you buy it and you do it because trust me, and from my own experience, my kids have learned so much by playing the cash flow game. So great question, Tina. So the next question is from Nikhil, a premium member on KenMacroy.com is, what is your main piece of advice for a first time landlord? So here's what I advise almost always. I usually advise that they use a professional property manager. That's the first thing. And I think that if you don't understand how a property runs, then you're gonna get annihilated. You're not gonna understand all the very basics. It's not as easy as just throwing a tenant in there and paying some bills. There's a lot that happens in the property management world. So if you're using your own money or you're raising money perhaps in, in buying something and you don't have the time and you don't have the experience, you really need to find a very, very good property manager. One other thing, Nikhil, I definitely think that you need to make sure that you're buying for cash flow and not just for capital gains. In other words, right now is a great example of that. Housing prices have jumped, real estate prices have jumped on multifamily, on commercial, and all that over the last several years. We all know that. The question is, are they gonna go higher? And so that's a capital gain strategy. That's buying something here and hoping that it goes up to here. That's gambling. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the next few years. But if you buy it for cash flow, then it doesn't really matter because you're not really relying on that. In other words, you're not putting your money in. Let's say you're buying something at 100,000 and you're hoping it goes to 150. You're not relying on that. You're relying on the cash flow from the tenant. And so maybe it goes to 90, maybe it goes to 120, maybe it goes to 150, maybe it goes to 180, but who knows? But the cash flow itself is what's protecting you, not the capital gain strategy. So those are the two things that I will give you for the first time landlord. So this next question is from Sebastian, one of our premium members at KenMacroy.com. And he said, what's the most impactful book you've ever read? Now I get this question a lot and there's a lot of books. One of the most impactful books for me is Good to Great. Now it's interesting because the reason why I love that book is because at the time I had started my company, I was in the property management business, I was running an investment company and I was raising capital. And the truth is I didn't really know where to turn or, or who to ask these questions on culture. And so the good, good to Great book written by Jim Collins, I think is a great book. And he rates the, the leaders as level one, two, three, four, and five leaders. And it's, it has all this stuff in there about companies that have been around for a hundred years and why. And it all has to do with culture, how they run the business, who the leadership is. And I think probably one of the most impactful lines from that book is in the very first sentence on chapter one. And it says, the enemy of great is good. And what that means is sometimes when people start making money and they start running their businesses, and you've seen this many, many, many times in restaurants and in retail and all kinds of different companies, they're just average. They're average because the owners are making money and there's no reason to be great. And so the, the enemy of great is good. And so I love this book because it, it says, it basically, I felt like I was good, but I wasn't great. And so what it made me do was strive to be great. And there's all kinds of great examples and stories and things that you can do in this book that can take you personally just as an individual or your company from good to great. So I highly recommend that book. It's been years since I read it. Actually, I'll probably read it again now that I just had this question. So thank you very much, Sebastian. Great question. So hey guys, thanks again for all these great questions. Keep them coming. I hope you found these answers helpful. And uh, again, thank you. Hey guys, it's Ken McRae. Well, over the years, people have asked me, how did you start, how do you start, and how do I start? And so I wrote this book, it's the ABCs of buying rental property. And this book is going to walk you through step by step, starting at the very beginning. And don't worry about if you don't have any cash 
And don't worry about if you don't have any knowledge. Just read this book. For 20 bucks, you're going to get a lot of knowledge and you're just going to have a little bit more than when you started. And especially now when we're going through all this uncertainty financially, having this kind of knowledge is going to be really, really important. And who knows when this happens again, because it will happen again, another downturn will happen again, then you perhaps will be in a much better situation, have some passive income like millions and millions of other people are enjoying right now.